We have now finished implementing our linked list in code, so let's talk about its performance and some practical cases in which we could use linked lists. Let's first explore the performance and time complexity of linked lists. Linked lists have a constant time, or O of 1, runtime for adding and removing nodes from the head and the tail. This is because we are using our head and tail pointers to keep track of our head and tail nodes. Therefore, we never have to iterate through the whole linked list to find the head or tail. We can find it and perform an operation on it in constant time because we always know right where they are because we have our pointers. So adding and removing nodes to the head and tail of our linked list is clearly very performant. Searching a linked list can be done in linear time complexity, or O of n, because to find a value that we are looking for inside of our linked list, in the worst case scenario, we would have to iterate through the entire list to find that value. So as our linked list grows in size, the time that it takes to run our search function will grow proportionally to the size of our linked list. O of n is still an acceptable and efficient time complexity. So as you can see, linked lists are rather performant in nature, and that is one of the reasons that they are a commonly used data structure. Some practical uses of linked lists could be in online gaming, for example. So let's say you are creating an online poker application. You might want to use a circular linked list in which the head and tail of the linked list are connected to make a circle to implement the gameplay. In this situation, you would have additional pointers that reference the player whose turn it is, or the active player, the dealer, big blind, small blind, etc. Online games are just some places that linked lists can be used in practice, and of course there are many other places that linked lists can be applied as well. One last thing that I want to touch on about linked lists which could possibly come up in interviews, is why they are a good data structure to use in lower level languages that actually deal with memory management, which you won't actually have to deal with in JavaScript. And the reason that they are a good data structure to use in languages that deal with physical memory space on your hard drive is that they allow you to break up a lot of data into little pieces that can be spread across different areas, and they don't necessarily have to be stored together. For example, if you want to store a list of data in memory, one way to store that data would be to store it all together, like this. Where the green blocks are the new pieces of data we want to store. But what happens if some areas of memory are already taken up, and you can't store the data all together? Well then in this case, you could use a linked list. You use a linked list because each piece of data is stored on its own, and each piece of data also has a next pointer that references the location of the next piece of data, which is essentially the next pointer that we have implemented on our linked list. So all of the data is still connected, it's just not stored all in the same place. This graphic might help you to visualize what is meant by that. So linked lists are very effective at using space or memory efficiently too. That is it for our work with linked lists. I hope that you have learned a lot and have a better understanding of what a linked list is, what it is useful for, and how to implement it in code. In the next section, we will be exploring and implementing another very powerful data structure called the binary search tree. I will see you in the next video.